All right, I think we should start. So, welcome everyone, and thanks for making our extraordinary um, a seminar in the last in the series, I think, for this semester. And it's my real pleasure to welcome uh, Wei Guang Ali from uh, the A Star Bioinformatics to to visit us and to present uh, the work of uh, his institute and of his own group. So uh, Wei Guan is uh, the head of the research division and the deputy director of the A Star Bioinformatics Institute. For those who don't know what A Star, A Star is the premier network in Singapore, uh, which combines uh, many our research institutes. And more recently, uh, uh, Wei Guan also is a senior member of the just uh, formed. Uh, Center for Frontier AI Research in Singapore, as well as the uh, associate professor at the National uh, University of Singapore. And uh, the, the, the research group of uh, Hai Guan uh, has uh, lots of interest ranging from fundamentals of data science to the applications in life sciences. And he uh, came all the way from the uh, Physics of condensed matter to the very much uh, forefront of data science. And without further ado, I would really like to give the floor to Pigon to tell us more about his work on uh, CT in the cardiovascular applications. So let me share the screen. And please feel free to ask questions in the chat with those online and, of course, in the room. And we're recording this session, uh, so it will be available to our voice later. So, yep, the floor is yours. Okay, uh, first I'd like to thank Igor and also Oliver for organizing this uh, seminar. And of course, uh, yeah, I enjoy my, my trip here. I came this morning, it's very nice. The weather is like Singapore, not <laughs> but just a lot cooler. <laughs> so, and also thank everybody online and here to for spending your time to come and uh, allow me to share our work with you. So yeah, so for this seminar, I want to represent a little bit my institution. Maybe spend five minutes between five to ten, ten minutes and tell you what our institute is doing. And also I put my email here. So I uh, really hope that I can help my colleagues in the institute to put more collaboration and more context to them. So if you have any interest on anything that I showed on the screen, please you can email me and I can take you with the correct, I'll link you to with the correct message. Yeah. Okay, so this is uh, our executive director, Sebastian. And then uh, here, this slide shows you uh, what we really do in the instill. We post data, we integrate data, we analyze data, and then really we want to have a real world impact as, as in general right, by the instill. Because we do some basic research, so my colleagues doing this research, right? Uh, everything should be inspired by how useful is the research. Eventually, it could be quite basic, but it, it should eventually lead to something useful. So, the three pillars of um, research excellence human potential, new bio data analytics, and uh, epidemic preparedness. And these three pillars are supported by horizontal side hosting uh, bio data and, 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 and core capabilities. So, okay, for human potential, we actually work in a big range. You think of the human uh, trajectory, right? Prenatal to OH. Actually, uh, Igor and myself and Oliver and also Ed, we have a project on the prenatal, prenatal side. And then, um, of course, there are other, my colleagues are also doing prenatal work, other kind of prenatal work. 
We also have research on OH and healthy longevity, and also research cancer, and then uh, Christian medicines, national Christian medicines, and even national Christian medicines. And we have this gastro and espresso. This is a very huge project. We have over a thousand uh, children, prenatal, who now the, the oldest children that we follow, we as in Singapore, okay, because gastro and espresso is not biohumanities project, it's a natural, natural project. Okay? So we have followed the oldest children about 12 to 15 years now. So we have followed them for many years. Then for epidemic preparedness, uh, we are involved in this G state. Uh, some of you may be aware of G state is the world largest COVID posting site that holds COVID sequence and other things, patient data and so on. Um, we have about 15 million, 14.8 million entries. And really, uh, we really want to do some data science, lots of data, right? Using this. So we have other programs, we have to prepare programs, and then we have, we are working with Ministry of Health and OH. Uh, they're building a platform for real-world data and data analytics. We're working with them. Um, so there's this program called the Christian Medicine, National Christian Medicine Program. Um, which started 2017, we sequenced 100K people in Singapore. Now we are in phase 200, 10K, now we are in phase 200K, and we want to achieve 1 million sequences. And in this program, there are many things in this program, one of which is precision drug discovery. Okay. Uh, basically, my colleague Chandra and Simi, they do a lot of uh, drug discovery, protein simulations. Uh, ligand, pocket discovery, target discovery, and even now we're trying to do R&D. Okay, digital health solutions. This is a slide on the digital pathology, mostly cancer data, okay? Data from cancer patients. So this is me. I work more or less uh, upstream, more with fundamental basic research developing AI algorithms, and this is the, in the middle we have Wei Niao. It's in between the upstream and downstream. It's doing platform for QC checking and the AI histonos. Um, AI histonos is an annotation platform which incorporate AI into the annotation. And then downstream we have Litsyn. We have um, software, web-based software, HPA and immunoalice for sharing, for user interface, for people to interact with each other. So it's more downstream. And then we have other work on cardiac. These are three work on cardiac. Candidal X-ray angiography, where this is an invasive uh, method where they put candida from the hand of the toy all the way to the aorta and then look at the stenosis. In the middle, we have ultrasound. This was a, this is a past project, actually. We finished this around before COVID-2019. And then the company S2.ai takes over and they develop the selling this technology. And today I'm going to talk about car, we have CP, the Apollo project. Later, I will focus more on this. Okay, so we have, we work with many institutions, almost all hospitals, definitely all big hospitals. It's quite a handful of them, six, seven. And then um, we work with Ministry of Health, and of course we work with companies as well. Okay. So yeah, so I put my email here again. I am really happy if you contact me, I can link you to any of my colleagues and then you can do some work together. Yeah. And uh, I also want to say that we give one to two years fully funded PhD excellence scholarships uh, with overseas university. I know Manchester has many students in this program. Uh, the, the, scholar, the scholars, 
this is attachment. So the, the, the degree comes from Manchester still, the student is still Manchester student because ESR we cannot do degree. Okay, so you just do research in Singapore. Um, we also have fully funded internship three to six months in Singapore. Okay. okay, any question up to here? No, we go on. So this is my lab computer vision and pattern discovery fan. Okay. The formatting is somehow in different machine. The formatting in my machine is nice. In some other university is nice, some other university okay. somehow different machine. Okay. Sorry about this. Yeah, the font also changed. Yeah, okay. So uh we do quite a wide range of work, uh digital pathology, oncology, cardiovascular disease. Protein structure and drug discovery, agriculture technology, and others. Okay. So protein structure work is usually is generally come from my physics background, condensed matter theory. And we're doing simulations and now we're doing protein, yeah, protein work. So uh, just a very brief overview of what we do. These a few projects that we're doing. We are involved in uh Spatial mix nowadays. Spatial mix is very hot topic. Maybe some of you in the audience may be involved in, then you recognize this. It's a very hot topic. Um, we do virtual drug screening with Van Hao, um, with the uh, my colleague Van Hao. We do drug design. This is a fragment based drug design where we use uh, reinforcement learning to design drug that binds into the pocket. Okay. And these are, are the work more, more physics like work. Of course we work with uh, the when you see in Korea that uh, we try to use AI to speed up molecular dynamics machines. So here we have on lattice classical Hansenberg spin model. Uh, this work has been published and uh, we have a 10 times speed up with the same simulation accuracy, just using AI to do the simulation, to predict the computation. And because this on lattice actually is much easier, and then we want to do off lattice because the protein are off lattice. And we use Leonard Jones fluid for a start. It's really tough um, for Leonard Jones fluid. We can achieve about 10 times speed up but this work has not been published. We're still pushing the boundary. Uh, hopefully, we can get more, more than 10 times. <laughs> so basically, use the AI to predict the physics equations, the, the, the molecular computation. Uh, this another work, I work with the Technical University of Munich. I was in Munich last week <laughs> to meet those guys. That we do point of care, uh, blood tests uh, using flow cytometry. And this is actually guided angiography, which I described just now. Basically, uh, injection and then look at stenosis. Okay. Well, all these things we use AI, all these things. And more basic research has been AI to explain the adversarial motivation. This is more applied research where we look at, we quantify the growing of plants under different conditions. How do we grow more plants with less cost? So basically, that. Okay, so any question until now? Maybe, I think I'm okay with time, right? I'm okay with time, okay. Uh, Okay, my talk is a little bit, a little bit short, but uh, so we need more time for discussions. Okay. After that, you can ask me questions. Okay. So now I want to talk about one project. Um, this is a project that is funded for three years. We are one and a half years into the project. We have another one and a half years to go. Uh, we are going to phase two, which we really want to focus on productization, how to grow to go to cream. Okay. So, and we are very happy to have international collaboration, international cohort. For example, there's a hospital in Manchester. If anyone 
in this hospital any clinicians uh, really interested to try out Apollo our platform very much welcome then we have international call right okay so uh, yeah this in this project we do contrast and non-contrast CT scan and this is a team the team is is quite huge team and we have clinicians we have Zhong Yang who is a lead PI he's not a clinician he's uh, actually his background is really engineering uh, then we have Logan, Leonard, Theo, Munson. These are the three key clinicians that are helping us on this cardiac CT. And then we have Weiming, myself, we are the AI guys, and then Kian. He's actually a clinician, but he's doing data, uh, data storage and so on. Bak Chan is also a clinician. Okay. So, yeah, we have. This, this network covers the three largest centers in Singapore. Three largest uh, clinical centers is National Heart Center, NUH is National University Hospital, and Tan Tok Seng Hospital is the three largest hospitals in Singapore. And, and among these three, in total, we have six three CDs, CD scanner that scans over 6,000 scans a year. And here, I in this slide, I try to convince, uh, just put in some data to show people that heart attack is a, a key problem. I think people, people understand this. I mean, in general, people understand heart attack is still a key problem, a key killer in the world. So there are some, these are some numbers. And in Singapore, of course, it's also a key killer in, in Singapore. So, yeah, so is the importance of this work and of course health economics wise there's a lot of money involved in terms of healthcare costs by the government of course private sector and, uh, uh, people are unable to work and so on there's a lot of health economics issue in view of everyone so so CD scan is the first line of, 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 of uh, screening, right? Uh, yeah. First line of investigation, right? It's recommended internationally, including in the UK. So this slide show the main architecture of the Apollo project. We have three things, AI platform, big data, and life-saving apps. Okay, so big data uh, for the big data part, we have a large, large means we are recording 5,000 patients, retrospective and prospective, 5,000 patients. And PDPA here it shows PDPA means Personal Data Protection Act. It's a law in Singapore, PDPA compliant uh, data. We, we actually the one of the value proposition of this project is that we have good data, we create data properly, we annotate them and we check the annotation. I think this is nothing to do with AI, but preparation of data. It's a lot of value. And of course, AI platform, uh, that we build the AI platform. Um, I want to say that uh, for this project, we don't we don't claim to do rocket science AI totally innovative AI and so on and so forth. This is an application project. So we use a lot of off-the-shelf AI algorithm and just make them work on the data, okay? There's a lot of engineering, non-trivial work, but no novel AI algorithm development. I would say no big novel AI algorithm development, but a lot of to think how to use the data and engineering work to make all this platform work properly and robustly. Okay, there's still a lot of new ideas, but not in terms of really AI, AI foundation and design. And then we have uh, life saving apps. We make a web based GUI. We're still making, we have an alpha release of non web based 
new GI to say that actually, and we have one to make the web based GI. So that people in Manchester, for example, could log in and use Apollo, right? Upload their image, use Apollo. So in this app, we have AI calcium score scoring the calcium. These are non contrastivity AIE, AE, epicardia, adipose tissue, the fat on the heart, okay, quantify the fat and the heart. AI center line in human, that means trace out the artery accurately. And after we trace out, we look at stenosis. Okay, AI calcium score and AIE, AE are non contrastivity AI center line, stenosis, and blood transplantation are contrastivity. Okay, only in contrastivity we can look at the artery. Otherwise, we cannot see the CT. Just don't show them. Okay. Yeah. AI blood basically do a classification of blood, classified or non classified. Okay, recruitment page, uh, status shows our target 5,000 patients, and now we have 4,500. Actually, we are more. This slide is a, bit, a couple of months old. Okay, now, now we are more. Okay, until April, right? This slide until April. So, um, this shows the statistics and the balance of data from different hospitals. Okay, screen and yeah. And so, on. Uh, data annotation, as I said, we have three clinicians. Okay. They spend actually a lot of time on guiding. We have a team of annotators, they guide them how to annotate. And for some of these heart, we have multiple annotations on the same patient. And that's very important. We don't have so many. We, we should have more multiple annotations on the same patient. We don't have so many. Uh, about 100, something like this. I think in the next one and a half years, we should do more of this. So that because in the Clinical work. Data scientists like to talk about ground truth, right? But in clinical work, there's no ground truth. It's just labor, right? Labor from human, which is subject to noise. So we should have multiple annotation for each, uh, for each heart. Okay. okay, calcium scoring. This is our results. Um, yeah, these are results. Um, this is this are just a cartoon to show uh, stenosis and and in contrast, non-contrast CT data I show you in the slide how it comes out. In non-contrast CT, calcium come out as bright spot. Okay, in do CT, you see a lot of white stuff and white spots. Okay, and a lot of white stuff are the rib cage, the spinal cord, and so on. Right? Okay, they are calcium, but they are not. So we need to use AI to distinguish which are the important calcium that we get. And sometimes they have aorta calcium, the valve also has calcium. We need to distinguish them. Where are the calcium of the artery? Where we cannot see the artery. Okay. So this is a little bit more difficult, but and then uh, our current performance is this. Um, the vertical axis is expert reader. Horizontal axis is the AI prediction. So this is the computer matrix, which is quite good. Uh, which is quite good. Um, except that, to be honest, I don't quite believe in the moderate and severe case. Because let's say you look at the expert reader severe case, three plus one, four. Out of four, we get one correct. You can say anything by luck, right? So we need to have more data on the moderate and severe case so that we can be more confident on our performance. Okay. So yeah. So this is uh, the algorithm we use, which is nothing uh, not of not rocket science. Actually, we use this pattern so it came. Uh, no rocket science, uh, to make everything work well data properly and, and to, to, to do all those quick that they could get good performance this is value, right? So um so what we do is we take the calcium, the white spot, okay, the white spot, whatever we see in the city, the white spots. Okay. When you see a white spot, we do a surgical axial and, and coronal cut. So we have three cut, three 
times 2D image. There we do, we do classification on those convolution neural network, and then we combine them to do a prediction. Actually, here we just put LAD, LN, LCX, LCA. Actually, we have a free class other non artery calcium. For example, uh, rib cage and a spinal cord, and so on. Okay, so yeah. So we just do a prediction. LAD is left artery, artery is still, LM is left main. L means left, per se. LCX less circumflex. RCA is the right coronary artery. Okay. Uh, this is AI epicardia epi adipose tissue to quantify the fat at the heart, especially near the artery. Okay. So, um, you can see the image, human labor and review. This is just one example. But uh, you can we show also the statistics. The mean error volume is seven percent, and the dice score for the segmentation is zero point nine, which is very good. Well, actually, we will not do satisfied with this because uh, we insist to look at worst case. Mm -hmm. We're looking at worst case is very important. Twenty three percent, which is not so good yet. It's a very stringent criteria, but it is not suppose we want to reduce worst case to I don't know 10%. So, yeah. yeah, this is the model we use, the uh, unit plus plus 3D unit plus plus no rocket science. Yeah. This is the segmentation for the center line in human, and we can achieve uh, high performance. This is contrast CT. 94.95% center lines between one and then from ground through. Okay, which is, which is quite good. After we segment out the artery, we straighten them and then we analyze the, the artery in, along the center line. Here, yeah, for example, we go and do prediction. After straighten them, we do prediction. Uh, is there stenosis, not silicon stenosis, and silicon stenosis? And the black label is nothing because the black label will be. So you can see the ground through prediction, scale two prediction, scale three. Uh, this is a work in progress, so we have different scale to, 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 to do a classification. And um, basically, in, for the AI, we use transformer encoder because this is really a series, right? We use a transform, leisure, leisure transform. And the plug analysis means uh, we do classification of classified or non classified plug. Okay. And we use CNN and the transformer to do this. Accuracy is good also in 3%. Okay. This is a graphical user interface. This is a Python version. This is not web based. Uh, the doctor's clinician basically can see all this. Okay, and then we generate a report. Uh, this automated report generation. Okay, for the report, there's nothing, uh, not so much AI in the report. The format is standard. Patient name is all format standard. It's really after analyzing the image, the our software decide where to take which box to take, right? Is this severe or not severe? Okay, so the report generation is very simple. The hard, hard part is which box to take. Okay, so the doctor will see a report. Of course, they can see the, they can look at the image and they can understand how the report comes about by looking at the image and looking at the prediction of the AI software. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is a traditional clinical workflow. One to two hours for Logan to read the slide of clinician. And for AI, we will do this five to ten minutes. Okay, so the focus is to reduce the workflow with accuracy. Yeah, yeah the collaborator collaboration opportunities, of course. Collaborating with local and overseas hospital, for example, in Manchester, we pretty much welcome such a collaboration because we want to work with pharmaceutical for uh, clinical trials. Because uh, in Singapore, we also 
run big collects to do clinical trials with human speaker. And of course, uh, working with medical imaging AI companies. Okay, some media release, you know, media release around our uh, project. And key takeaway is that we have flush cohort of high quality data and also Asian registry imaging and we have flush real data points. As I said, QC our data is very good. Um, we reduce work for 10 minutes. And then, yeah, this is an AI part, reconstruction, trusting support, and so on. Okay, I want to show a video, just a one minute plus video. And for that, um, essentially, uh, I already say a lot of these things, but maybe you'll say it better. Welcome to your whole platform. The platform integrates AI toolkits into the current clinical workflow to benefit patients and make a real impact. This platform allows automated anonymization, reporting, calcium scoring, coronary stenosis, and plaque characterization. It also provides a one-stop platform spanning from diagnosis, management to prognosis, and a predictive therapy response to pharmaceutical treatments. The Apollo platform creates a tremendous impact on three levels. Firstly, the Apollo platform shortens the processing time for image analysis and diagnosis. This also allows accurate assessment of plaque burden in coronary artery disease. This will undoubtedly be attractive to pharma, meta, and SME research and development investment in Singapore. Secondly, Apollo provides objective and consistent clinical trial endpoint measurements at a cheaper cost. This will increase the probability of success and reduce timelines in drug discovery and development. Thirdly, the Apollo platform provides a rich resource for SMEs to build their AI technologies for CT. All of these will strengthen Singapore's position in healthcare across the region. Thank you very much. At Apollo, we are committed to delivering tomorrow's AI solution of CT for coronary artery disease today. Okay, showing the team again and the uh, acknowledgement. Uh, support from many institutions, especially on the first line, is A star IAF. IAF means industrial alignment funding, keeping this pre position. So, this money is given to us to make some kind of product that, that can engage the industry. And so, on. so that's why this explain this project is not fundamental AI research by small application. Next time, I think that actually work and work well. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. We go on. Any questions from in the room? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um so the AI models that you build, do do they have a sort of explainable as aspects of them. Can you interpret how they're, what kind of features are extracting from CT scans and do they sort of make clinical sense? Yeah, we, we have to make a uh, work on explainable AI in this project. Definitely no, it's not our focus. Um, of course, we have to have something for doctors to be confident that whatever is they see in the report is, is kind of consistent, correct, and check, right? So we provide our intermediate results. The, the way we explain is really be very visual to provide the intermediate results. So doctor can check how we do a segmentation, right? But we don't do explain with the IP. So is it being used in hospitals at the moment or is it still at a research stage? I, I, I would say it's at the research stage, and but we have installed this with the host institution, National Heart Center Singapore, and they are doing trial on the trial, not, not clinical trial, trial on the software. And doctors, our collaborators are using and telling us 
this button is bad or whatever, right? They are using software trucks, but we have not implemented, we haven't get any regulatory approval, so we have not implemented. Thanks very much. Any other questions? Anybody from online? So, so maybe you want to say at the research level, you can engage, we already engage overseas the hospital at the research level, not at the production level. Yeah. And what do the doctors who are using it think of it? Uh, they are our collaborators, so it's okay. And they try out the news, you know, so they are babies. So, yeah, they, they, they do feedback to us some, some feature that they want, some feature they don't want. And generally, they, they like this because we are team. And there are also certain feedback about this. For example, EAT uh, classification, the worst case is, is 23%, which is. Not, not really ideal. And we kind of identify what's the main problem because EAT is at the edge of the, the heart. Imagine you segment something at the edge. Your segmentation is just a little bit off. Your EAT volume will increase twofold, right? The one pixel is twofold, right? So there's a problem we discussed with the doctor. We, we all acknowledge this a problem. Of this person. There are still a lot of challenges in this project. Yeah. Yeah. Other questions? Do we do online? Well, well, I think if I have a quick question. See, you, you showed uh, several uh, specialized tools, mm -hmm. uh, one for cars and one for segmentation mm -hmm. satellites. What are they? The benefits of combining two in, in one pipeline, mm -hmm. which tries to do several and single kind of fly segmentation and or, or an output versus having more kind of independent modules. Mm -hmm. So what are yes. these? Okay, so um uh, I can answer it in several ways. One is there are four modules here, but uh, we could use them independently, for example. The top two non contrastivity the bottom two contrastivity I myself, I tried contrastivity it's not very comfortable. Mm -hmm. non contrastivity is faster, cheaper. So if the patient do only non contrastivity they can use top two. If they do use both, they can do four. And really, we want to use contrastivity for the top two as well. We haven't do this. Right? So the patient do one scan, okay? So this can be modularized, but your question is, what's the advantage of combining all four? Okay, this platform, we are really focused on making something that's useful, but beyond something that's useful, right? You can report in five minutes, for example. Then the next step is we will ask, okay, with all this scoring, does a, is the diagnosis better? And the doctor made a better decision to how to treat the patient. But that is not in this platform. But our hypothesis is we provide more information that the doctor will make better decision. Of course, our, the clinician, the world of us, they, they agree with us. Okay. So, so for this project, we just want to give the correct information. Right? We have other projects not under Apollo that we are working with. For example, a PhD student working with me on calcium scoring. We other project that we want to say, okay, you have calcium scoring. Can you predict uh, myocardial, myocardial infection within five years? So we are also do other project using this data for prediction. So uh, for Prisha, we think it will be stronger because we have more data. Beyond this, we also have patient data, age, whatever, smoking, whatever, right? Okay? Yeah. Thank you. Any yeah. other questions? We're online. Well, I'll ask another question. Uh, so you mentioned that predictive models 
Um, but I wonder if uh, the predictive mean of the models using other data or any physical physics based models, for example, you know, if you have the same content of calcium, but potentially in different places, the might mm -hmm. affect mechanics differently. Yes. So are you, you know, planning or, or already working on, on kind of combining this? Okay. So, okay, for our whole project, we don't do predictive model because we have resource uh, money is for doing this. We have other projects that we want to do predictive model. We could use Apollo as, as a base. Uh, predictive model for the calcium scoring when doing, we are studying all this diffuse or not diffuse. Diffuse means the calcium, because calcium, they have what's called Augustine score. Take the volume of all this uh, calcium, okay, HC value, and come up with one score. The Augustine score do not distinguish with it. You have one big lesion here, or you have three small lesions everywhere. It doesn't distinguish that. And, and, and then our, the patient working with us is saying, and it's also known this is no good, right? If you use me, you have calcium everywhere, but smaller ones. So um, the prediction, the, the diffuse calcium is actually more dangerous, OK? But your answer, your question is: Do we, whether we use Felix? No, yeah. we don't. We we just uh, get data, data driven. We don't use physics to do this prediction. Yeah. When we have not do a fractional pool reserve, where people use physics to, to calculate the statistics. Thanks very much. Well, last chance to ask questions. In this case, let us thank uh, everyone again for.